Welcome everybody here to our next uh, webinar at uh, JFT Bank and a warm welcome in the name of JFT Bank as well. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski as always for those kind of webinars behind, a little bit behind trading. It's not just that I say, hey, let's uh, let's have a look to a chart and decide whether we should trade Euro, US dollar long or short. No, it's always a little bit more from a mathematical point of view and today it's even a little bit more it's more statistical point of view so we talk about trading and statistic oh i have to mention the date yeah we have uh, the 14th of november uh, 2019 7 p.m so everything as always and many thanks for all the greetings here um in the chat um thank you very much for that for that let me introduce a little bit more about the subject of today trading and statistic i mentioned already that we will not have a look to any chart at all um, but basically i want to introduce you to two different kind of aspects one is that if we look to trading statistics so if we look for a trading account with its own characteristics or if we look to a given trading stra strategy and even there it's uh, easier to derive two key figures like uh, hit rate and uh, risk reward ratio for example that based on that those two numbers we can learn a lot about any trading approach any trading strategy so we, we can simulate trading results and you will learn that's not everything as you might expect and that you need hundreds and even thousands of trades until you can confirm those kind of statistics and that leads to another question if you for example if you do the development of trading strategies by your own or you um, you go into the internet or read some books about trading strategies then you can ask yourself hey is there any real significance behind those kind of trading strategies so is there a statistical evidence a statistical significance and what are the criteria to say uh, to state that yes there is a significance behind and we will derive those criteria and uh, you will be astonished um, that most of the strategies you normally uh, see around in the internet or where in a book that those will not fulfill those criteria finally if you now have a good trading strategy there's always one remaining question uh, not only one uh, but but the very beginning already you you ask yourself hey what amount of money should i risk per trade and there's a common answer to that and um, normally once again you you might read oh yeah let's go for one percent of my capital or two percent or five or half a percent whatever you found you will find those numbers as given but there's something which is much more cool and that is the so-called kelly formula that kelly formula is a real that is a real name is a quite mighty uh, formula it's really a simple equation but um to answer the question what amount of money should i risk for a given trading strategy based on those two key figures hit rate and um risk reward ratio and then you will get the answer and um it really depends what kind of trading strategy you follow what amount of money you should really apply as risk per trade so those are the topics of today and um, if you like you can already download the slides uh, via your go to webinar control panel and finally i will show you three different excel sheets if you have interest in those then please drop me a line at um, s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com I know I have a really complicated last name so just call me Stefan and um, if you do any misspelling with my name okay anyhow if 
you, you mentioned Stefan in the email, uh, the support will make sure um, that I will get the email and I will make sure that you get the Excel sheets. Okay. Oh, there has been one question. The webinar is, of course, um, recorded and will be published tomorrow um, before lunch already at the JFT YouTube channel. So, so you can find the recordings there as well. You know the procedure I have always to show once during a webinar. There is a disclaimer because we talk about trading, we talk about um, investment, we talk about trading strategies, uh, risk management and things like that. But of course, finally, whatever you do, you do it on your own responsibility. Um, so that is, uh, I think, quite self-explaining. But anyhow, it has to be mentioned at least one during any webinar. So I talk already a little bit about our subjects um, today. So we start with hit rate uh, combined with a risk reward ratio. Maybe I should um, just say triple R and uh, I hope that you then know what I mean. Uh, I mean risk reward ratio. In the German language we always uh, call it C, uh, C R uh, V, um, chance risiko verhältnis, but anyhow, so this would be a triple R. Hmm, okay, sounds strange, but anyhow, risk reward ratio. And we will simulate equity curves. Honestly, we have done similar steps already in other webinars, but today we look from a different perspective, but we use that as a base. And then we go via the significance to the Kelly formula um, uh, in the final end. Okay, let me start with simulated equity curves or statistical equity curves. Of course, we know that uh, we, our trading strategy, um, our trading strategy is uh, can be characterized by uh, those um, two numbers: hit rate and risk reward ratio. Why can I say? Your complete account can be characterized by those two numbers. Yeah, finally, you, you can even calculate those. Uh, hit rate is like more or less straightforward. Number of um, positive trades uh, divided by uh, number of total trades. And um, risk-reward ratio. Okay, maybe you have different uh, approaches, different strategies, and use different numbers for those. But what you can do is you can do something like an average. You you just calculate um, all uh, the, the average win divided by the average loss, and then you have your average risk reward ratio. So we might take as an input a real trading account, or we just take those numbers um, just as descriptive numbers for any trading strategy. And if you simulate out of those two numbers our equity curves, you will really get a better feeling for your trading strategy or your trading account. Because it's not always the same if we have those two given numbers and then we, we simulate the equity, we will get always different equity curves and they really look different, you will see in a second. And the other good thing is doing so um, you, you get a better expectation attitude for what you can you can and might achieve with your trading trading strategy. Since later um, I will use one one um, uh, expression here expectation value that is the number we can calculate uh, out of uh, the two hit rate and risk reward ratio that is a expected result or profit per trade. And of course, we should only trade uh, something with a positive expected uh, value as the profit per trade, of course. As you see already in my slide, I want to jump into the first Excel sheet and I will do. And let me explain a little bit. And uh, you might remember that we have had a different one, uh, not a different, a similar one already. But anyhow, we can use it as a perfect base for any discussion about uh, statistics and trading. So we, what we have here is just uh, five, uh, four numbers. We start with a hit rate, 
which is now set to 50%. Then we have um, the profit, and uh, let me change from the German to the English webinar, risk reward ratio, which is here set to one. And I have a loss, which is set to minus one, and I will not change that number anyhow. I only uh, will change the risk reward ratio, which is expressed by um, if you divide those two numbers, but then you we always uh, take a positive uh, number as being the risk reward ratio. And in order to have something which is more like a real trading account, I just say, okay, let's start with a constant fixed risk per trade of 10 euros and later as I mentioned already, if it, if it come, when we come to the Kelly uh, formula, uh, then we will have a percentage value from our capital. Here we use just a constant one, uh, just 10 euros. And we'll start with an equity of 1,000 euros. Okay, you see that I have already one equity curve here, and I decided to have 260 trades, and I did that um, by purpose, because that we might reflect or we present a trading account uh, where you trade one trade per day, and then we would look to your equity after one year. So one trade per day. Okay, let's take that one. And as you see already, my expectation value with those kind of numbers is, uh, of course, zero. And um, yeah, even my equity looks a little bit like that but let me start pressing f9 because that uh, excel sheet has random numbers so we have what we have is that we use fixed values for hit rate and risk reward ratios but we can calculate new equity curves uh, just pressing f9 and up to now they look all similar but now i have the first one totally different. Hey, that would be already a nice one, isn't it? I mean, hmm, 200 euros earned, 20%, not that bad. But the question is, I always use the same kind of statistics. So I have not changed hit rate or risk reward ratio. Astonishingly, we get always, and we have even after 260 trades, we, have, uh, we are in the minus. Let me first do, let's call it an extension before we follow my original idea what we want to do here. Let me first start with another thing which you can already simulate with that kind of um, Excel sheet. So you can answer the question, in general, what kind of trading strategy is better? One with a high risk reward ratio, like two to one, three to one, which are typical for trend following systems, or what about trading strategies which are have risk reward ratios smaller than one which is typical for strategies like for example mean reversion if you can just decide the answer is not that obvious because what i will do now is let me first go here for trading strategy um, with a risk reward ratio of three to one okay that looks nice uh, the, the equity goes north uh, but that is not realistic. Let me put back the hit rate to value that we have once again an expectation value of zero. Okay, I know that is not a profitable trading strategy, but I want to illustrate something else. And you see it maybe already here um, by the different, uh, if I press once again, uh, F9, hey, the, let's call it the volatility, the fluctuation is even higher. And to have that in a better way, I have a second page here. Uh, same thing, same Excel sheet, but here we simulate right away 10, uh, 10 times the same, uh, 10 different uh, equity curves, always following the same statistics. And here you can see the one with risk reward ratio of uh, 1, with a hit rate of 50%. And now let me go back here to the same I used on the other side uh, with 3 to 1. and you might see that the overall volatility is much higher. Okay, that's not that good. And now let me go into the other direction. Um, let me go, for example, for a trading strategy uh, with um, 
point two, and um, but now I need the right number for uh, the expectation value. Let me do it here first, and that is I think something like eighty three percent. Yeah, that's already good enough. Eighty three point five, and then uh, it would be a little bit less. But now we are close to zero. I use the same number here. 83.5 and you see I think that's really quite obvious that the fluctuation over different equity curves is by far not that high that means if you simply can decide if you have two two good trading strategies one with a high risk reward ratio and a given expectation value and you have another trading strategy with a low risk reward ratio but with the same expectation value so your expected profit is for both the same but from a fluctuation perspective i would prefer the one which has less volatility less fluctuation and therefore risk reward ratio smaller than one for a given expectation value is always the first choice okay that was only a side remark but now back to our original um, idea that we want to have a trading account okay but of course we don't want to have a trading strategy which shows up with just an expectation value of zero so therefore let me go for 52 risk reward ratio one okay fine with that and now i even say what you might not like I have a return, an expected return after one year, since I say the 260, tra uh, 260 trades represent one year. So I have a return of 10%. And I say that is a good number. And indeed, I believe that. I know that everybody wants to double its, uh, his account or her account in one year or even one month. But that's not realistic. If we could double our account in one year, that would mean that after 10 years, we would have uh, 1,024 times more money than starting at the starting position. And honestly, that isn't realistic. So any number higher than in the range of 20% uh, is definitely not realistic, at least my strong belief. Um, Everybody can convince me uh, that he can do better, but please do it a couple of years in a row um, and not just uh, with a few trades. So therefore, I'm satisfied with 10% or 10.4% anyhow. But now the problem starts. If that is our trading strategy and we would review our account after one year, then in this case, the blue line, we would be happy because our expectation value is exactly the, the, the red line here and we are even above. But now, let's think mm, we have another account and that might look this way. Okay. We, after one year, we have lost money, but we have not gained any money. So it might happen. So you see that we have a high uncertainty. Uh, sometimes we are on level, but sometimes we are below. So it's hard to decide, oh, is this one would even end up in a loss after one year. So it's, so we would trade that strategy and after one year, we would have to decide, go, do we go further? And I think most of us would attempt to say, okay, after this year, I would stop the strategy and let's change. Let's go for a new one. And honestly, that's not a good idea because in this case, we know, we, because I put that into the calculation, we know hit rate here, 25, 22% risk reward ratio one. So we know that the strategy is good, but my trading result is not good. So what should I do? In this case, we know we should go further, but let's look to that from a different perspective. Let's think about, um, we have developed a trading strategy and we have uh, got the result that uh, we have 52% uh, and uh, something like that, um, those, those kind of key figures. 
how sure can we be after 260 trades that we have indeed a hit rate of 52%? Or let me rephrase that kind of question because you know I'm a physician. So if I do a measurement and we do here nothing else than a measurement, we have always to ask the question, how precise can we measure? So the question here is, how precise do we know after 260 trades that we have indeed a hit rate of 52%? Okay, in this case, the hit rate would be below, but we have always that error bar, the precision of our measurement is, yeah, is not zero. So, and since trading is applied to statistics, so we should know what kind of uncertainty we have after we do something like the review of that trading statistics after 260, uh, 260 trades. So, Therefore, it's a question of significance. So what is the error we can expect with those limited numbers? We know that statistics is always a matter of big numbers. So we should have millions of trades maybe. But what is the right number in order to be precise enough to say, okay, that we have at least a hit rate higher than 50%. So let's assume, <clears throat> or let, let's say we want to be at least as precise as 2%, because that would lead that we, to, to, to a trading strategy that we definitely know that this one is profitable. But if our error would be here 5%, hmm, then we cannot decide with our 52 whether we really have a good one, yes or no. So that's a quite important question when it comes to trading accounts, when it comes to trading um, strategies, because everything can be boiled down to a hit rate and a risk reward ratio. But we have to know how precise we are in our, not really estimation, in our measurement, because the pure calculation of the hit rate is um, perfect. Uh, we can do that uh, with 10 digits after the comma, but we have to know the statistical uncertainty. Okay, let me let me go deeper into that topic, um, but first, once again, what is the message, uh, the take-home message, message already from the first investigation? So we know already that small risk-reward ratios have a smaller fluctuation band which is good. So if you you have um, the lucky situation that you have maybe different trading strategies with the same expectation value, then I would always go for the one with a smaller risk reward ratio because then I have more smooth equity curves with less drawdowns. So definitely I would prefer those. So that is already learned just from simulated equity curves. That's nice. But now back to the question, how many trades are sufficient in order to have a significant statistics? That's a quite fundamental uh, question. There are honestly statistical tools um, and, and methodologies to answer those one. But reading and introducing those, um, they are quite complex. Therefore, we do everything here just with a few Excel sheets uh, because then we can visualize uh, our results and I think we can more or less to the same kind of answers. The other question behind is from a developing point of view that we need to know how much history we should have. So I develop a trading strategies that say on the D1 base and we have uh, for the last 20 years I have uh, 100 trades. So what is my statistical uncertainty or the other way around significance having a good trading strategy out of those 100 trades in the last 10 or 20 years and we need a defined criteria for that and that we can do. Okay, 
let me go for the next um, Excel sheet, which uh, is especially meant um, for that uh, for that answer. What I've done here is something quite similar to the first Excel sheet. Let me guide you through what you see here. Once again, we have a profit, we have a loss, but now no euros, just those two numbers. And uh, finally, just a remark, this Excel, uh, this Excel sheet straightforward um, is definitely meant for something um, with a risk reward of one and a threshold of 50 percent that has to do with a, uh, one calculation later uh, you will see in a second mm. now i have extended the number of trades up to ten thousand so we have ten thousand trades here and what you see in the lower um, right corner is once again that kind of equity as in the previous excel sheet since we have an expect uh, expectation value of zero uh, yeah that might be our equity uh, of course and if i press f, uh, f9 again uh, we would have a different one but that is the typical representation of such trading statistics but what about that picture with the red and the um, yellow line let me go directly into my excel sheet then you will um, for sure understand what i've done here the question i have asked myself so starting after the first trade which in this case has been a winner trade because of a plus one here what i can do after one trade i can calculate the average of all last trades in this case just one okay therefore we start at a hundred percent because uh, up to that moment we have uh, exactly one trade and that was a, a winner one um, look for what i have in the second line now i can calculate the average of my trades after two trades okay since the second one was once again a winner trade i have once again 100 percent and with each additional trade i can look back to my trading statistics and see now okay i've done three trades two winners one loser so my average is 33 percent and if i press for example uh, not the picture just that cell here so then you can see okay i can now create the average of the last uh, about um, 15 trades so and that is exactly what i have plotted here with the blue line of course with threshold 50 percent risk reward ratio of one that blue line should converge how is it called converge oh uh convergieren in, in german so what would go it should go more close and close to the zero line so um that's for sure because the more trades i have and since i start or well, i put in that we have a risk reward ratio of one and this um a hit rate of 50 percent of course the blue line should come more and more close to the zero line we know that and of course it's confirmed here but now you can see what i mean with my red and my yellow line because they they create a corridor here and that corridor and i will uh, in a second i will show you what kind of formula is behind um those two lines if i just press f9 then you can see even if i have a new statistic um, more or less in all cases they really those two lines the red and the blue one as uh, a red and the yellow one they create that kind of corridor so my my with more traits i'm getting more and more precise in my measurement hey that was my question i want to get a number for how precise can i 
measure a hit rate after a given number of trades. It looks already that my two lines, the red and the yellow one, are really something like that precision. Because, and I even um, create a number, how many of those numbers are within that range, and this is given here uh, in that cell. Uh, in this case, I'm uh, at the end, I'm sometimes out, but anyhow, you see, I really follow that kind of corridor. That's good. And the corridor is really easy represented. If you see what is behind that Excel, uh, um, uh, that cell, it's just two divided by number of trades square root. Hey, that's all. And that's the basic, um, let's call it formula of any statistics, the one over n square root, because that is something like the statistical uncertainty, and that is exactly what we need here in order to answer the question, how precise can we be after a given number of trades? And you see, oh God, we need a lot of trades in order to come to what did I mention? I want to be precise as 2%. Um, the good thing is I have already done the calculation uh, because for, for my, my, my trading strategy with the 52%, I decided, hey, Craig, I want to have an error of maximum 2%. And since I have um, done the calculation, so just uh, um, solving the equation for the number for the given precision, which is then two divided by uh, precision uh, square. Um, you see, I want to have 2% as, a, as uh, a given precision. And you see how many trades I need. 5,000 trades. So only if I would execute 5,000 trades, I'm within my error of 2%. So only then I really could state I'm above the 50% threshold. Oops, that might be a little bit disappointing for anybody here. Back to the um, what I said, um, 260 trades, let's uh, round it up to 250. That would mean after 20 years. Hmm. So only after 20 years, I'm precise enough to say I'm above 50%. What a nightmare. But it is as it is. So statistical significance, and uh, we we may may take out the one here uh, as a two, the factor of two. I put that into the equation here just to have more or less in most cases all my uh, numbers within the corridor. So we might discuss the two here and replace it by one. Um, okay, then we would have um, not 5,000 trades, but uh, 2,500 trades would still would be 10 years. It's a long time after we can really decide what we aim for. And back to the question, if you develop a trading strategy, you really need a lot of history. You nearly, you really need a lot of trades in order to statistically decide whether you have a profitable strategy, yes or no. Even if it looks like being profitable, it might be just a statistical representation of what you have done. So remember, not always, in this case, it's uh, down here, but it's not enough to have an equity curve which goes north. That's not already enough. We, we need statistical significance. But the good thing now is we know when we reach the statistical significance. And that kind of formula gives you the answer. So what does it mean in reality? So deciding after 260 trades, I have a profitable trading 
account? The answer is, of course, we can decide. If the number is above your starting level, then you have a profitable account. But is it a statistical significant profitable trading account? You need exactly uh, to measure your precision. And that can be done with those easy um, formulas. So that gives you, hopefully, a new insight into any trading strategy. And uh, be aware that most, oh, sorry, now I'm on the wrong page here, uh, that most trading strategies you might read in books or get to know in other uh, webinars, they would not fulfill those kind of criteria. So let me summarize those once again. So if you want to measure a hit rate with a given precision, plus or minus x percent, then you need two over x square trades. So in my example, if you want to have an error bar of 2%, I need 5,000 trades. Whoops. And most of those strategies, which are wherever described, they will not fulfill that criteria. But now I have a remark to make here. This does not auto automatically mean that they might nevertheless work. So even if they have not the statistical significance, they still could do it, uh, uh, its job. So I cannot say it's definitely a no-go. No, they might work nevertheless. And even vice versa, I have unfortunately the same. So even if you have a trading strategy which fulfills those criteria, that gives you not a guarantee that they will work in future as well. As always, because if we have something derived, the future is unknown. But for me personally, it's a quite important precondition to have trading strategies with a statistic which really fulfill those kind of criteria. And so, and still I don't have a guarantee for, for any future behavior. Yes, unfortunately the answer is I don't have it. But now we are at the point, let's say we have a good, good trading strategy and I still will work with my 52% hit rate and um, risk reward ratio of one. But now we have a, a luxury question, so to say. We have a good trading strategy and we can ask ourselves what amount of money I should risk per trade. It's a simple question and typically you, you find answers um, in the literature like 1%, 2%, half percent or whatever. But that number is not correct. You can use those, yes, but you might can do better with a different approach. So the question is how much in percent, now I change not to a fixed risk per trade as uh, up to now, to a percent number of my capital, how much risk I should apply as being the risk per trade in order to maximize my profit. You might tend to, the more percent I would risk, the more result I get. And the answer is no. Then you will lose all your money. And I can show you that you will lose all your money. Because if you invest or uh, risk too much in percent of your capital per trade, then you will definitely get bankrupt. Definitely. That might be astonishing. But uh, you will see in a second. Since I will not come back to that slide, I already give you the, the answer in the formula, which is given by the Kelly formula, who has uh, derived uh, that kind of number. And you see how it's uh, done. And once again, you just need the hit weight and the risk reward ratio in order to calculate that number. Let me illustrate what we are really doing here. So now we don't have any more um, a fixed euro amount per trade. No, now we have a percent amount per trade. 
And you see, my Excel sheet once again looks quite uh, similar to the previous one, but there are some changes. Let me show you what I've done here. So we have a hit rate, okay, you know, we have a profit, which more or less means here's a risk, to, uh, risk reward ratio, we have a loss, and now that's new, we have a risk per trade, which I start here with 1%, and I have a starting capital of 1,000 euros. Okay, we know that this um, works, and the strategy has uh, an expected Rotation value if we would have um, of 0.04 here. Okay, but now we are doing something different from previous. And you see, just if you follow here uh, the lines, that for our first trade, we risk 1% from our capital, which means 10 euros. And in this case, unfortunately, um, we lost um, with our random numbers here. So after the first trade, we have just only 990 euros. That would mean that for the next trade, we will risk 9 euro 90. And in this case, we lost, uh, we lose once again, and so on. And here's the first winner trade. And you may already realize what's the basic problem and why um, you should, and I will show you uh, in a second, if you, what will, or what might happen if you go with 10% per trade. Let me already do the quick calculation before we really go further here. Let's say the first one is a winner trade and we have, um, our risk was 10%. So, okay, so if the first was a winner trade, we will, our risk would be 100 euro and our profit being a winner would be 100 euro. So after the first trade, we would have 1,100 1, euro. So the next trade, we will risk once again 10%, which is 110 euros. But now if that is a loser trade, we are below our starting capital of 1,000 because then we would have 990 euros. And here you see the dilemma. That's the reason why we, we for a given hit rate, um, we, we don't can use too much money. Okay, what I have done here else, because even here I can do uh, the calculation of so-called expectation value or an expectation factor, but because now I have to think in factors uh, because we have a percentage value of our risk per trade. And you see how the logic works. Now I go for 5,000 trades here um, and with a given hit rate, I have 2,600 uh, winners and 2,400 losers. All my winners would be um, a factor or a winning factor of 1.01 if my trade risk is 1%, and all my losers would uh, be a factor of 0.99. And now we can, so to say, sum up everything, which means we, we, we have to multiply that, those things. Therefore, um, the sum is in brackets here. All the winners, the 2,600 winners would give such a factor, and the 2,400 losers would give that um, um, factor. Those multiplied gives our expectation value, and that means we can expect after 5,000 trades, starting with 1,000 euros, we can expect close to 6,000 euros as our final result. Okay. And now you see my graph. And I have plotted the expectation value. I have plotted now the y-axis uh, logarithmic scale because, uh, of course, we need that. And we have the expectation line here. Now, at first, it's the same like before. It's statistics. So we might be above uh, expectation value. We might be below uh, just pressing F9 gives always a new um, a new calculation. Good. That we know because that's pure statistics. But now let's let's go higher with the risk per trade. So please remember that yellow number here, 5,700 euros, because the graph itself will not tell you every, uh, and, um, everything being statistically impact. So let me change to 2%. 
okay, I went up from 6,000 to 20,000 expectation value. Wow, good. Let's go higher, 4%. Wow, now we are at 55, uh, 54,000 euros. Perfect. And now even higher, 8%. You see what happened? My expectation value is now 900 euros. So after 5,000 trades and a risk per trade of 8%, with a profitable trading strategy, to emphasize that, we are at the same point like before 5,000 trades. Oops, what happens if you even go higher? Uh, 12%. Okay, you see 0.01 euro. So obviously that was too high. Ah, I introduced already the Kelly formula. Hmm. And that's already implemented here. So we know if we risk too much, we even lose money with a profitable trading strategy. And we saw already that if we are with very small numbers, we may not realize as much profits as possible with the same trading strategy. But we know already the answer. What is the the optimal value for um, the investment uh, ratio, and that is 4%. It's just um, applying the formula of my slide uh, with the numbers of hit rate um, uh, and risk reward ratio. So we know for 4%, we have the highest expectation value, and in this case, the highest expectation value is close to 55,000 euros. If you go below less risk per trade, like 3%, we have a lower number. If you go higher, like 5%, we have lower numbers as expectation values. And we have the best one exactly with the Kelly criteria. And that is, in this case, with hit rate 52 and risk reward ratio of one it's just four percent hey that's good to know but there's a but remember what we discussed during the first half hour of my webinar there's a high uncertainty for a hit rate for a given account okay then we know it we can do the calculation but there's a statistical uncertainty hmm. even if you have a number of 52 percent should it be wise to think it's really 52 maybe we should reduce it a little bit or well, let me first start illustrating it once again just as the trade risk. So what I've done here is I have my hit rate, I have my risk reward ratio, and now I'm back at 260 trades um, just for illustration purpose. And now you see I have my y axis, um, my x axis here being the trade risk. And then you see exactly what we have realized already on the previous Excel sheet that if we start with risk per trade of 0%, <clears throat> okay, that means we do not trade and therefore we will not lose and we will not um, gain anything. But anyhow, so therefore the profit after what 260 trades is still one, so that's a factor. But if we increase the risk per trade, we get more and more money. But if we go above the threshold or the Kelly formula, in this case 4%, then we go down once again. So if we do not know the hit rate number that precise, and we know that we do not know any hit rate precision enough, then we should always go to the left side. So we might calculate that 4% is good, but let's always go to the left side because then we have 
we are on the safe side. If maybe our real hit rate is a little bit less, let me just go for 51.5. Then you see the Kelly goes already from four to three. So it's better that we are on the left side from the Kelly criteria um, in order to be always on the safe or more safe side. And there's a rule of thumb, just go for Kelly half. Uh, that's what you can find in the literature and that has another implementation or advantage. Let me go here for Kelly half, meaning not for the 4%, being the investment ratio per trade. No, let me go for 2%. There's another good thing. Okay, we uh, let's start with a not good thing. Um, originally, we have had an expectation value of above 50,000. We lost a um, little bit more than half of, of our potential profits. Yes, but we gain one thing else. Just let me press a couple of times F9. So you can see that the overall fluctuation is by far not that huge as being before, if I went exactly for the Kelly um, criterion. So therefore, we have a little bit less fluctuations. So that's another um, plus for always going for half of the Kelly formula. But it, nevertheless, it's a really mighty um, formula that uh, that Kelly criteria, because we can answer now the question, what is the optimal number for the risk per trade? If you have a given trading strategy, maybe developed by your own, maybe found in the internet, maybe just looking to your 10 years track record of your own trading results, whatever. So we know now that we have a formula which gives us uh, the Kelly criteria, and then we have that kind of number. In my case, it has been 4%. But now, and um, I have more or less already illustrated, uh, that's the first statement here on, on that slide, that uh, if we go two, uh, above two times the Kelly formula, remember that was the 8%, and then further, then you will definitely lose all your money. You remember? I will repeat it just uh, that you realize it once again. So at eight, that is two times Kelly, uh, we we are back to, uh, we don't earn anything. And if you go above Kelly, we are on the loser side. In this case, statistically, we won, but um, our expectation value uh, is more or less zero. So as you can see, six euros here, sometimes we even will win with those kind of um, uh, numbers, but that is the expectation values. So there's a guarantee for loss if we are above two times Kelly. And if the right decision, since we know that it is quite difficult to, to have it's called the correct hit rate. Therefore, it's always recommended to apply only half of the Kelly formula to be on the left side um, of the maximum. That's a quite mighty tool uh, because it answers the question how much money you might invest for a given trading strategy. And that brings me already to my summary for today. And let me first start once again with simulated equity curves. Please do it by your own. And you can have those kind of Excel sheets or you create them by your own because that gives you really a feeling. And you might remember that just pressing F9 uh, sometimes uh, gives you a profitable trading account, sometimes a non-profitable trading account. And that's pure statistics and nothing else. And you know how difficult trading is. is. Um, and even on, and only trading statistics can only can can lead to losing accounts, and you just would have to wait. 
So play around with those statistics, then you get a feeling for what you have. And we talk about statistical significance, which is really important because even after 260 trades with my winning trading strategy of 52%, we could not be sure that we have really a good trading strategy. We learned that we would need 5,000 trades, uh, and if we take out two in my equation, then still 2,500 trades. So you, you would need 10 years if it would be a one trade per day trading statistics in order to decide whether we are really on the profitable side. So we need high numbers of trades in order to decide something like that. And I think it's more trades than you might have thought about. Finally, if we have a good trading strategy, then the introduced Kelly formula provides you a reasonable value for your risk per trade. And in order to be on the safe side, just go for Kelly half. Uh, you know the reasons, uncertainties, and you get a little bit less fluctuations, which is quite good as well. So, and we started with the first statement, smaller risk reward ratios at the same expectation values are even better um, than higher risk reward ratios. Once again, the reason is fluctuations and drawdowns. I hope that has been a quite interesting uh, webinar for you as well, even if you have not looked to any chart, just to have some background information about statistics and statistics of trading, of trading so that you learned a little bit and uh, can go further and better with your own trading activities. That's for today. Um, I wish you all the best and enjoy your evening and see you again in two weeks maybe. Then we discuss really a direct trading strategy. Let's see. Have a good time. Bye-bye.